Hi again. This time I'm going to be redoing the blending video. Um, looking back on it, the previous one didn't work too well, so I'm going to give it another go. Um, friends supplied me with um, some horse um, horse halves, basically, that I've glued to this bit of wood and just primed and undercoated in a green um, so that we can kind of demonstrate it. Hopefully it'll be less shiny under the lights. I've also kind of mucked around with the camera a bit, so hopefully things will actually sort of stay in focus this time. Um, I've got my palette loaded up with a couple of paints just to start with. I've got the base colour um, that we used initially. It's slightly different from the actual green that we used previously, but it's slightly lighter. That's more of a mid-tone. I've already mixed up. Uh, I've already had a sort of play of mixing up sort of a, a darker version of it. Um, obviously, I'm going to make the transitions on this a bit more extreme than you would if you were actually painting it, just to sort of show. I've also got some reds. Um, Red's a good colour to mix in with green because it's a complementary colour and it has the effect of deepening the colour rather than just darkening it like black does. If you if you just mix green with black, you end up with quite a dark colour like that. It's very, very, very desaturated. There's there's sort of no there's no real colour to it. But if you add in a bit of red as well, you end up with, if you get the mixture right, a deeper sort of green. If you can see that, hang on a sec. There we go. So it's a sort of a deeper green, almost a sort of browny colour. And depending on how much sort of green you mix in there, you can get a much nicer colour than if you just mixed in straight black. So we're going to be doing that. Um, so again, I'm going to be working with the uh, with the three different types. Um, this is going to be quite tricky actually. Um, the colour I used was actually a model air colour, which means it's very, very, very thin to start with. But we'll give this a go. So, the first one, I'm going to be using sort of this sort of area. So the first one is layering. And in that, you literally sort of put down a layer of the dark colour. So you end up with a dark sort of area like that. So, we just blow on it slightly to let it dry. We'll come back to all these at the end so you can actually see what's going on. And I'll also go back and do a light, do a light section down there so you can see the transitions. Um, second one, you do pretty much the same thing. You need a second brush for this. So I'm just going to hold the second brush in my hand. So you put down put down your dark colour like that and then with a slightly damp brush you just feather off the edge on either side and you can go back and you can do this multiple times till you get the effect you're looking for um, and with paint this thin you don't really need to worry about it drying out you sometimes find it dries out quite quickly on the very edge but the water on the brush usually picks it back up again. Acrylic paints, although they seem to dry out fairly quickly, don't actually become water resistant for about 24 hours, give or take. So you're usually sort of relatively okay going over them. And then the third, which should be fairly easy with this style of paint, was the wet blending. So we'll give this a go. So what we'll do, as we'll put down a layer of the colour then we'll go back in with a layer of the shadow which appears to have gone quite liquid let's try and mix up some more of it a little dab of red in there put some black in there we go that'll do and we'll put that in there and you can see you've got quite a strong transition at the moment but the general idea is you're essentially sort of mixing the two colours of paint together actually on the model. This is really quite tricky and it's not working for me. Not sure why. This is one technique that I've never actually really got the hang of. The, the, I think the paint might be too thin to do it to be honest. 
um, it's just vanishing straight into the crease at the moment it's not really going anywhere I mean it's kind of going somewhere but we'll see so there you go so the dark shade you can see you end up with just a straight dark line down the middle of it with the, with the middle shade it's a bit difficult to pick up on camera but you've actually got a sort of slight gradation going on over there and again the more times you actually do it so you go over it again especially with paint this thin and then just take, take your brush run down the side of the paint and it does make a big difference and then the wet blending which in all honesty hasn't worked particularly that's quite a good angle actually so there you can see you've got a bit of a transition going on and depending on how many times you work it and there you can see you've got no transition at all so what I'll do is I'll grab a lighter colour we'll just go in with a white for now would be easiest so uh, I'll just grab one I've got one round here somewhere there we go sorry that was just my paint racks so we'll grab a whiter I'm not going to need much at all white's quite a strong colour especially with the paint this this thin you're not going to need to worry about it very much at all in fact that's way too much so there we go so let's make a bit more of that And there we go that'll do nicely nice light color it'll do for now so then again similarly you just put it sorry you just put it down wherever there needs to be a light color with the paint so thin you can see it's leaving a line down the middle where it's sort of spread away from the spread away from the center because that's that's where the sort of sharp ridges um, obviously if the paint was slightly thicker this would be all right and again with the two brush put a line of paint where you want it like that and then just grab us grab a wet brush run down and you're essentially moving you see that little spot of paint there I'll try and get a bit closer there's a little spot of paint on the model just under where the brush is and you can literally move the, the sort of the particles of paint around and you can get them positioned where you want them and that helps enormously with that kind of technique so there we go that's quite nice and then we'll have another go at this so grab some more of the main colour put it down and we'll grab some of the light colour put that down as well and then we'll run down the centre line dabbing at it to try and mix the two together need a bit more of the highlight colour this is definitely a technique that's worth learning it can be the results can be absolutely spectacular if you get it right um, but it's also one of those techniques that's incredibly hard to learn um, okay so you can see with the with the sort of the basic layering technique obviously I've massively exaggerated the colors you'd use and if you wanted to get a smooth gradation you could use sort of four or five sets of colors throughout that and make them less um, make them less um, contrasty, less different essentially between the two so you'd have less of a change between the three the three sets three sets of colors um, with the with the two brush blending you probably go back in and put another put another few layers on that again this is mainly because the paint's so thin um, because I'm using the model air paint it's designed for an airbrush not really painting on um, so there you go so you can see it does kind of start off at dark and then sort of slowly get lighter as it goes on and sort of where you get that with with this there's sort of it's sort of flat there and it sort of curves up quite sharply so you end up with that sort of um, 
that sort of curve so what you, so sort of fairly fairly large flat area of dark sharply going up to a contrast point so that look I think that looks all right it's difficult to tell again the lights sort of shining off but there you go and then the wet blending again not a technique I'm any good at this is a lot this is a lot just straighter there's no real curve to it um, but again you can see sort of there's the area on top that wants to be a lighter colour and there's the midsection that wants to be a middle colour and you just sort of blend in between the two at least that's the idea of it and um, there's certainly people out there that are better at it than I am but there you go so hopefully that's a slightly better video so you've got the layering which is straight layering just put colour down then you've got the two brush blending where you put the colour down and then just sort of go along the edge with a wet with a wet clean brush and just sort of go along the edge and essentially feather the edge off and it takes it takes off the um, takes off the sort of the, the the edge contrast that you get on that one and then there's a wet blending where you're literally taking multiple colours and mixing them on the model so I mean the the, the general the general idea is that you're ready, you're trying to end up with a, a transition from one colour to another whether that's going to be stepped um, blended or sort of mixed um, and again like I said in the previous video there's a fourth method which involves glazing um, where you'd use paint that's even thinner than this um, you'd, you'd be looking for paint that's sort of really really watery and essentially um, let's have a look if I do it on one of these if I turn this upside down if I work on this bit so essentially with a if I take a lighter color there we go so essentially you work it up towards where you want to see the lighter color and then you'd blow on it to dry that out um, see where the see where the colors ended up see if you like where it's ended up if it needs more you carry on putting more on um, it takes ages it takes absolutely ages because you're looking at sort of putting 10 20 30 layers on and drawing the model out each time um, I know that I know people use um, hair, hair dryers and things like that to dry the model out you can just blow on it um, sort of speed up the paint drying but it's a very time-consuming process but you do get some extremely nice results from it if you're willing to actually spend the time to do it so there you go so I'll just turn that around again so there you go there's the layering straight transition stepped colors the um, two brush blending go in there put one color down feather the edge of the color and uh, wet blending which is um, mixing two colors of paint directly on the model so there you go cheers